So before we start this uh, plugin review for Unreal Engine 4, I made a little bit of a derp on the last video when I explained how to enable the Sim to Unreal add-on for Blender. Uh, well, I told you to come to Unreal after you have installed the add-on on Blender and go to your plugins and search for Python, enable this, restart your uh, your editor, then go for your editor preferences and search for CPU and uncheck this uh, box here when for useless CPU when in background, but I forgot to tell you to go to your project setting and enable the remote execution by searching Python into your search bar because if you don't do this, Blender and Unreal will not be able to communicate and send uh, files to each other. So, now I hope that I have fixed the issue and let's hop into the new video. Hello and welcome everybody to the second part of this uh, tool reviews and tutorial for Unreal Engine 4. Today we will be talking about the uh, level assistant, level design assistant tool that is basically, uh, to put it simply, an array modifier for Unreal Engine. Okay, most of the time there are lots of assets that you want to get repeated into your scene. For example, if you are building a temple, a pillar, or if you're building a highway, or if you are building roads, stuff like that. There are lots of placing of assets, okay? I mean, well, it's a tedious task, okay? Just uh, dragging and dropping or copying and dropping it, trying to align everything. It's kind of tedious sometimes. So this tool here will help you make this process faster. And yeah, let's dive into it. So, uh, this tool you can get it from the Unreal Marketplace, it's a free tool, you can download it and I will leave the link to it in the description below. Now, uh, how to install it? After you got it on the, Unre uh, the, on the Marketplace, uh, it's called the Level Design Assistant plugin. Uh, you just need to activate it into your, into your plugins uh, list. And after that, it will ask you to restart the editor, restart it, and that's it. You will have it in there, or actually it will be here, but I just moved it here for uh, just convenience. And let's start with it. So, first of all, uh, duplicator. Duplicator is basically an array into one vector direction. So just on the x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, or a combination of all three. So for example, this here is basically uh, this cube duplicated all along the x-axis just five times. And how it works is basically you select the object that you want to array or duplicate, and then you hit the quantity, so you want to copy it five times. So five, and then you hit the preview. And as you see, because here we have the offset is set to 0, 0, 0, that makes that it will just duplicate it, this cube five times and leave it in the same place, in the, in the origin place. So let's say that we want to duplicate it along the x-axis, so we just add to the x-axis, and as you see, as I increase the distance, the preview will show you where the new meshes will be duplicated to, like the placement of the new meshes. So what if I want to duplicate it along the y-axis? I just need to change the x-axis to zero and then put like, I don't know, minus 500 on the y-axis. And as you see, they will be duplicated along the y-axis and the same thing for the z-axis. But what if I want to have it duplicated in this direction, like an x-y coordination? So I just need to add the new, light, like, vector coordinations and everything will move accordingly and also if I want to move it along the z-axis and after everything like for example let's say that I like the placement of the thing here I don't like it on the so let's say that I want it onto the v and x-axis and we have a stair for example and I just need to, du to press duplicate 
But before duplication, there is something we need to choose from. Here in the selection, is basically it will ask you what mesh to select after the operation of the duplication is done. So, for example, right now it says select the new meshes. So after I click duplicate, it will deselect the original mesh and will select the duplicated star, uh, meshes. So if I just for example, if I click the keep mesh selected, it will basically select only the original mesh and will deselect all of the all of the other meshes as you see. So right now, for example, let's say that you want to make uh, I don't know a cross. Okay, so you know this is your origin, so you want to duplicate another x, y axis in the all four directions. So you just need to duplicate it once in this direction and then this one again in this direction and this one again in this direction. So this is why would you use this, okay? But what if we want to create a duplication of all of the meshes? So we just select both, select, select both and duplicate. And what we'll see the next time you want to duplicate, like the, the next duplication, it will select all the meshes that you have duplicated and then it will just duplicate it again. And if you don't like this, you just can disable it from the preview, just the preview, disable it or enable it to see what you are working with. So, why would you use this? You can use this, for example, to create multiple stairs. For example, so if I just click this zero and this is one to zero also, but then I add this to y axis, we have created a, like, I don't know, a, a theater placement, for example, like you have the chairs in the theater or something like that. I don't know, imagination is the limit. So this is the duplicator. Now let's go for the grid creator. The grid creator is basically an XY duplicator. So instead of it creating it only on the X, Y, Z axis, like a, along a vector, it will create a matrix. So for example, here, I created a matrix of this cube into six by six, if I remember right. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. Okay, it's seven by five. So let me show it to you. So let's duplicate this one here and let's create a grid by uh, I don't know, 4x4, four four. and let's hit preview. And as you see, because the offset is 100 by 100, all the boxes will be here. Like, only everyone is attached to the other one because the, the box is 100 by 100. So if I create the grid, here you have it there. Now, the only issue is the, with the grid creator is sometimes it has this offset error that is weird i don't know why but it's weird it's supposed not to have it's like it's not supposed to happen but it happens anyway uh, disable snapping object to escape sometimes like disable the snapping help but sometimes it doesn't so if anyone of you knows how to solve this issue just please drop it down in the comment below anyway why would you use this faulty grid creator well, let's create this uh, 200 by 200. Oh, not 2 by 2, 200 by 200. Okay, so let's preview it and create the grid. As the other duplicator, we have the same selection methods. Most of the time, I would select both for one reason. For example, if I made a floor planning, and I want to recreate it along the z-axis because it's a building or something like that, I can just select both and then come to the duplicator and then add, for example, 200 on the z-axis and create me a duplication of the matrix I made. And it's pretty good, pretty easy and pretty fast way to create this type of stuff. I don't know why would you create this stuff, but it might be something that you want to create into your game or your scene. So yeah, this is how to create, like use the grid and the duplicator combination together. And the last one on the duplicators is the duplicate along the spline. So what it will does, 
it's basically it will create a spline and will duplicate the, um, the mesh along that spline mostly used for road creations or like uh, I don't know if you want to place some lighting lamps along the road what you would do is select the mesh that you want select the quantity let's say I don't know 10 and create spline and now if you click the preview because before you will find out that the preview even if you enable it it will not show you anything it will show you some defect something here but I don't know why it uses this anyway so create it and here you see this is our spline so basically a spline is well it's a spline it's a, a, a curve that you can control the direction and uh, the curvature of this curve the curvature of the curve yeah pretty classic anyway so uh, now if you want to create like to make this curve longer for example you have this twist and you want to make another twist here you just press alt and drag this point and now you have created another point and this point here you can control the curvature aspect of this point and make it curve this direction there and then you can move this point along this axis and as you see it will always distribute the distance between the new created meshes along the spline according to the curvature of the spline okay and if you click the update rotation what it will does it will rotate the cube or the mesh depending on the rotation of the spline itself so now if I hit duplicate and voila we have our duplicated spline most of the time I would use this method here to create roads and mostly roads okay I don't remember and pipes pipes like if you have like a, a steampunk city setup yeah a pipe uh, setup will perfectly be combined with this tool here now let's go for another aspect of this tool here and this is will be the move actor so this is basically a circular array so for example let's say that we have this cube this cube and this lovely cube here and this one here also that you want to have it set around this point of origin here in a circle okay you select your origin point and that is this cube here and then you select all the other stuff or the other messages that you want to circular array around it and as you see as 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 soon as I hop around it it will just place everything I selected around this cube okay and here is the radius of the, the placement so I can control how wide is the radius if I select other cubes for example these cubes here it will just take them from the place and it will put it in a, in a circular array around the cube so yeah this is a lovely tool if you want to create like a circular temple something like that why do I have it with temples these days I don't know now the other thing this is are like uh, more of organizing stuff like how to rename the assets that are created and all of these things I usually don't use it so it's not a big of a deal it's more for like if you are working with a team like a big team and you need to organize between yourselves so you have like a prefix setup that you have agreed on so you can just create it here and the, the duplicated meshes will be named after the prefix that you have uh, set up now let's go for the last thing that is the utilities the utilities are a really pretty handy tool that you can use the utilities are pretty selection sensitive okay that means the order in which you select the meshes is very important 
So for example, let me show you. If I select this one here, this one here, this one here, okay, and just for example, I will explain how this tool works now, but if I press align to X, what will happen, what happened now is it took the X distance between the first and the last mesh selected and calculated the midpoint and aligned every mesh along this uh, along the, the point on the x-axis so if I press here you can see that the middle point between the first cube selected and the last cube selected is this uh, line that is shown in the preview and again if I select the y-axis you will see that well they will all squash on the y-axis on the second cube and the z-axis well they are already aligned along the z-axis so it, it will not show anything but you see they will be placed as there are because there is no z-axis difference so again the align and the distribution tools are very selection sensitive again so this for example this is the align tool it will take the midpoint between the the three things the, the, the mesh selected and will align all the meshes along on the same point so they will have the same coordination along the aligned axis so for example if i press align along y they are now all aligned along the y axis in this direction along the along z they are all placed on the same z axis if i press align along x well right now they are all together fused but if i take for example this one this one and this one if I press a line along X, they will be all aligned along the same point on the Z on the X axis. Okay, this is the align. The distribute is pretty, 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 pretty. Like it's pretty, pretty too. A pretty, pretty too. I hope no one remixes this. Anyway, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. Now, if I press distribute along Y axis, what will happen is it took the distance between the first one, that is this one here, and the second one, and the last one, that is this one here, and it divided it on the number of the, the meshes in between, and it gave them an equidistance along the same axis. Yeah, I, I don't know how others way to explain it. It's just math, okay? It basically took the line and divided on the number of the meshes. That's it. And on the x-axis, as you can see, it, it takes the points on the x-axis of this mesh, this mesh, and distributed along the distributed the meshes along the x-axis. And this way, we have an aligned diagonal line between them. Well, now to end the explanation of this tool here, we have. The last one that is add rotation basically you take this one this mesh here and you set the the rotation that you want for example a 60 degree and you decide on which axis you want to rotate it if it's along the x-axis it will rotate it along the x-axis for 60 or minus 60 the y-axis same thing and the z-axis and uh, the same thing okay it just adds rotations to the mesh and what if you want a random rotation for your mesh well you click random rotation but what if you want it only on a certain axis well then you check only the axis that you want the rotation to happen on so if i only select well the blue is for the z the green is for the y and the red is for the x you can see them down there well you select the axis that you want to have the random rotation on and then you just click this button here if you want along the x the y z axis you just it will add a random rotation to the y axis and random rotation to the z axis the same thing is for if you select all it will add a total random rotation what if you have selected multiple meshes? No problem at all. It will add a random rotation to each mesh. So this ends the explanation and re preview for the level design assistant plugin for Unreal Engine 4. I hope that that helped you with, I don't know, maybe becoming a little bit efficient, more efficient with your 
scene creations or gave you an idea on on a project that you have wanted to make but it was a little bit tedious to make because it has lots of measures to place and I already used this for to create this demo here and as you see I just created it in like I remember it was like a half an hour like for creation of the room itself and then the placement of the lighting and the other assets was another 10 minutes so 40 minutes for the creation of this thing and also because I was uh, talking to my friends and when you talk to your friends when you're working is a big no-no because you will not do well while create well working because I love my friends. Anyway, I hope you learned a new thing. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave them down below. If you have any suggestion on what should I make like a tutorial on or a preview on, just drop it in the down below in the comments or you can join my Discord server. I created a Discord server and this will this way it will be more efficient to contact me and also to hang with you all guys because we have reached 90 subscribers yeah i will add some explosions to i hope i can be able to be added like explosions so yeah and also uh i have a really really big announcement to make well in the next video bro so Subscribe to get notified when the big announcement comes out and I hope to see you all on the next video.